Good morning. There are three announcements this morning. Our annual spaghetti dinner and silent auction will be on Sunday, November 3rd at 5 p.m. in Hanley Hall. Join us for a great meal and the fun of a silent auction. Tickets are now on sale today at the entrance of the church and at our parish office during the week. Eucharistic adoration is the occasion of abundant grace and a special way to show, <coughs> pardon me, special way to show devotion to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> a holy hour may be made at any time. Come and spend time with the Lord on Mondays. Doors off the parking lot are open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We would like to extend an invitation to all parents whose children are in grade six or higher who have not yet been confirmed and wish to receive confirmation to join us at Hanley Hall Parish Center for registration following Sunday Mass on October 6, 2024. A snack and refreshments will be provided. We look forward to seeing you there. Good morning and welcome. The hymns for this morning are from the Catholic Book of Worship 3 and Celebrating Song. They're indicated on the hymn board. Please join in our gathering song from CBW 3, number 564, Praise to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, this weekend we are invited to pray for the refugees and immigrants as we celebrate the World Day of Prayer for them. Let us keep them all who are especially around us seeking asylum and help. Make sure that we extend our hearts and hands to their needs. Let us ask God's blessing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Be so, we pray your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud, took some of the spirit that was on Moses, and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad. 
and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, innocent of great transgression. St. James. Come now, you rich people. Weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted, and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted, and their rust will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure for the last days, Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus had finished teaching the disciples, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great milestone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, do you anything concerned about the readings today? Or are you a bit nervous? Yes? No? Yes, you can decide whether you want to go to heaven with one leg or one eye or with both into the other side of that area. But I'm concerned about your richness and wealth based on the second reading of St. James. I was told that people in Smith Falls are very rich. So that bothers me in case if you are not following the instruction of St. James, either give it to the church, I can give it to the poor, or straight give to the poor and save your souls is my message for you. But let us see what Jesus speaks to us through the readings today. The theme for our reflection and thought is collaboration and cooperation will bring unity and peace if that comes through God's divine intervention. We listen to the first reading, it's beautiful, from the book of Numbers, where big complaints went to God. Of course, it's the Israelites. They were not vegetarians, so they wanted their meat. So they complained to Moses to bring us meat. And Moses also was complaining to God for giving him the chance to lead this non-cooperative people. And Moses wondered if God is with them, that things are not getting 
well or people are not following his instructions. They all take their own rules in hands. And so he asked God, either give me the support that I can lead them properly or take my life off from this world. And this is the background. God comes with the solution with the Moses, asking him to choose 70 Israelites. And he chose and put them before God. And God takes a piece of the spirit that he left on Moses and takes each person and give that spirit so that they became men to prophesy God's in name. And this was a support for Moses, but at the same time something happened differently other than these 70 men. The two other men, maybe young, was not even in the camp, resting or relaxing at their own places. And they got that same charism of prophesying two men, Eldad and Medad. And they continuously doing that bothered some of them, especially the junior to Moses, Joshua. He comes and asks Moses to stop them prophesying. And Moses asking Joshua, are you jealous of my sake? And Moses continues, I wish God gave all people to do the same charism so that they all will be good and God's people. And his humility and surrendering to the will of God is what make them go together and his willingness to surrender to God's plan, make it possible, and the non-cooperative people get into cooperative with the support of other people too. And when we come to the gospel, we see the same way of an instruction that Jesus gives to the apostles by the dialogue between Jesus and John, the one of the apostles, whom he liked more according to the gospel. And here he comes with the question, a man who did not belong to their group is casting out demon. Would we stop him doing that? So I want to ask a question, it's not a heartbreaking one. Do you remember the last Sunday's gospel? Oh, you are not better or bad than Blessed Sacrament. Nobody remembered. That way you can feel okay. We listened to the gospel of uh, Mark, the same chapter where we heard that the argument, I thought you will remember that because you argue all the time, even though you don't share to me, but I can see here and there, the arguments between the apostles asking who is the greatest among them. And Jesus answered them, those who welcome the vulnerable, the most dependent, and the least of the world is the one who becomes the great. And this is the continuation and after the argument there comes the dis discontent among them. Seeing the man who did not belong to them doing a good job, they want to stop it. In between these two readings, if you go through the chapter 9, there is another passage. A father brings his little boy before the apostles. 
the boy was possessed with a demon and he begged the apostles to cast out the demon from the boy they did all they could do but didn't work so the demon stayed with the boy so this father comes to jesus asking if you will my son will be saved and jesus told that man if you have faith your son will be saved and jesus did the miracles and saved the boy from the evil spirit and this is the background the apostles might be a bit jealous the things they could not do another guy is doing well so they come with that discontent somehow to stop claiming that he is not an apostle not even a disciple not even a follower of jesus but only uses the name of jesus and here again jesus reminds the importance of cooperation among themselves and collaborating with one another we can bring god's will work through our own lives and then jesus says you don't stop if a person who is casting out demon in my name he is for us even though he does not belong to us he has the grace of god do the good and erase the evil only god's hands can ha- do such things what happens in today's world we may not say that we are possessed by demons but aren't we possessed in many ways with the evil spirits what make us away from god's presence is the evil thoughts evil minded and everything that goes against the love of god is demon or evil and if a person can wipe it out then that person stand before god receiving the grace of god helping the world and doing god's will what jesus said to those people who came to him saying that his mother and family waiting for them to see he responded to them whoever does the will of my heavenly father he is my mother my brother and my sister and this is the way jesus is opening a wider family of god opening a wider society of god the world full of goodness that has to come from each person belonging to his name or not and this way he is addressing everyone are god's own children as long as they fulfill what god has for them to do doing the will of god jesus said another place everyone who calls lord lord will never enter into the kingdom of god but those who do the will of my heavenly father will inherit the kingdom of god friends when we listen to this reading and the theme of collaboration and cooperation ask about ourselves how much we collaborate and cooperate with one another in our own family circle in our own parish community in our own society and the world where we belong how much we argue to see who is the greatest in the family wife or husband who has the final say who is in a community in a parish meeting group how much we try to focus on my knowledge and understanding 
instead of listening to others. Everywhere we see that argument, discontent, and that make the plan of God not fulfilling in our world. The famous theologian Carl Tranel told this way, there are so many anonymous Christians in the world or unnamed Christians. They might not be Christian, might not be near to God's worshiping area, but they all do try to bring peace in the world, try to bring justice and righteousness that has to lead and rule and wipe out all the injustice, the evil spirits from this world. They are the people that belong to God. They are the ones trying to fulfill the will of God in the world. So friends, think about our attitude, being called Christians. Do we truly belong to that Jesus Christianity the way he teaches? Do we have that charism to speak the truth as the prophets did? Do we have the courage to support and strengthen who are around us in need? Or do we seek our own places of comfort and ignore or close the eyes against them? Jesus reminds us, you are not for this world, you are traveled to the eternal life. Do the right thing, good thing with your faith. Without action, faith is not complete. May the Lord bless you all to receive his grace and wipe out the demons and bring peace and happiness. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that the lives of Christians will proclaim the truth of the gospel as we intercede for the mission of the church. All migrants and refugees, and the salvation of all people. For the church, empowered by the Spirit to serve in the name of Jesus, for the outpouring of the Spirit's prophetic gifts on all God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and those in positions of power and leadership, for the pursuit of peace and reconstruction throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the little ones who have been hurt or scandalized, for those who have caused others to stumble in their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking employment or just wages and, uh, and justice, for all who are ill or undergoing treatment, for those who provide care and assistance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all migrants and the refugees who have left their homeland in fear as they seek hope, freedom, and a new homeland. For tolerance, forgiveness, and generosity among all disciples of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, including John Preston and John Murphy, 
and for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, and for a special intention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Inspire every heart with the knowledge and love of you, O God, and grant that we who confess Jesus as Lord may shun whatever is contrary to this faith and give witness to your love that has saved us in, in the Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us, 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that he suffered, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thorns and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, up your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he shed the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you 
so that we may obtain an inheritance which you are like. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, with Saint Francis the Saints, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased with the confirming faith and charity your pilgrim serves on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourselves all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you be on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Friends, I have to remind you one thing which is not in the bulletin, I think, but it is in the block note. The confirmation celebration is coming soon for our grade six children who are Catholic and baptized and can, is, date is going to be on December 8th, Sunday at 10.30 a.m. mass time. So I think we have two batch this year grade 7 and grade 6. I think the grade 7 batch did not have the confirmation. So there is a parent meeting coming that is next Sunday after 10.30 mass at the family hall here. So please pass the message to the parents and those who are connected with parent meeting coming next Sunday after 10.30 mass. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the Lord by your life. Son Michael, the Archangel, Angel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God rebuke him, be humbly prayed. prayed. And, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruins of the souls. Amen. Amen.